Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Here with a very good friend of mine. His name is Seth. What's up, dude? Hey, how is everybody? Very. Thank you very much for showing up here, being on this video. Today's Sunday is going to be a little bit different, y'all, because like first week it was like God loves you. You know, here's the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that is absolutely the most important thing in the world. And I forgot to set the timer, so we'll stop this at 30 minutes. So I'm going to do that while I talk. <laughs> but. This week we're going to do a little change of pace. I'm going to go political on y'all. As a Christian who lives in the United States, I have some say in who my leaders are. I have some say in who governs me, who sets the rules. Mm -hmm. And I want to propose that that is incredibly important. We aren't just left up to random chance. We're not left up to whoever the heck was born to you know whoever it you know whoever was the previous ruler we have an actual say in our leaders that is an amazing blessing so if the i would say vote for way more than just the president if you see anything coming up in your town where there's an elected official for your state house your state senate much less the federal house and senate you know vote for all these guys you have a say god has made us stewards of certain things and as members of the United States we have a say in our very leadership we are amazingly and astoundingly blessed for that we can't neglect that we can't say it's unimportant we do have a responsibility that being said I myself am a one-issue voter always have been I've it's for me it's are you pro-life or pro-choice if you like killing babies I'm not gonna vote for you hashtag triggered go go for it I really don't care it's murder there are very, very few exceptions to where I would say abortion is in the least bit acceptable or okay. For the most part, it's a matter of convenience. It's a matter of I want to slut it up and I really don't care about the consequences. Or if it's an inconvenience in my life, I'm going to get rid of that inconvenience. So for me, I've, I haven't delved deeply into politics because the party lines, Republicans are pro-life, Democrats are pro-choice. Okay, Republicans are good, Democrats are evil. And I know that's an overly simplified way of looking at the system. Way too oversimplified. And not accurate. So, with this particular election, because of Donald Trump, things are different. Um, he's the Republican frontrunner, and I have seen almost unending hate for him on YouTube and in media outlets out there everywhere and yet nonetheless he is the front runner he's the one getting the majority of the Republican votes P you know for all that I see nothing but hatred in news articles and stuff but apparently someone's supporting him and apparently it's not just someone it's so many it's good English right there so I want to talk to someone who does not like Donald Trump he is my brother in Christ and he is a conservative Democrat. Uh, yes. So I want, you know, and I remember when he first told me that, when we started to get to know each other and become good friends, that I didn't even know what that meant. That blew my mind right there. So his perspectives are much different from the quote-unquote normal evangelical political circle. Um, he will have a differing opinion. And he's smart. He's not stupid. Whoa. Whoa. So, hold on. He actually has, hold on. <laughs> in my opinion, he actually has room to speak and say what he wants to say because he will have a reason behind it. Like, I have no problem if you disagree with me, even on things like the gospel of Jesus Christ, if you have a good reason to disagree. A lot of people just make their decisions based on their emotions, what they feel, how they've been brought up, what's popular, which are all horrible reasons to believe in anything, be it religious, political, or even the games you play. You don't play a game because Markiplier is playing it or PewDiePie is playing it. Play it because you like the game. Play it because you think it's going to be an enjoyable experience. And I'll end that right there. I could, I could tangent on that, and we're already, we're already like four minutes or five minutes deep into this. What I want to know, as a one-issue voter who doesn't look into politics very much, and I will, I'll go ahead and turn and actually talk to you just face-to-face. -face. I'm probably not going to turn to the camera that much. Donald Trump, you loathe him. I do. You, you despise him. As do most educated Americans. You see, strong statement right there. Um, so as an uneducated American, I'm going to learn a few things tonight. Um, whatever sources he has... Um, I can put in the description down below whatever he if he has an actual news article I mean he's like he's done his research he's looked at his things 
and he's not going to have just like off the top of his head, well, here is HTTP um, colon slash www. He's not going to have sources like that. But if he has a general idea. Um, Two I forward can... slashes, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Uneducated here. So if he doesn't have that, um, we'll, we'll you know, just encourage you to Google it. See if he is making this up. See if what he's saying is correct. I'm going to have some work to do after this as well. So please, one of the things I really want to do with this channel is to promote thinking, to promote creativity, to promote education. And tonight, I'm getting educated. I'm going to get schooled in why Donald Trump is a bad choice for the United States. Um, and let me start off with something, too. I'm going to put a little bit of fire under you to stir you up a little bit. Are you ready? Yeah, and by the way, just to throw it out there, he's a bad choice for not just president, but any any office, any anybody in business, he's a bad choice for a janitor, just bad choice in general. Um, but Seth, I like the way, and I and I'm being serious when I say this. All right, mm. I'm being very serious when I say this. You're so not trolling me or anything, right? Th this is not. If I, I'm actually not going to troll you during this during this particular video. I'm going to be dead serious. Um, it may sound incredibly stupid. It may sound trolly. It is not. I'm going to tell you that right up front because yeah. we've had conversations in the past where I'd be like, "Yeah, but this is great. That wall needs to go up. Those stupid Mexicans need to stay out of our country." And I would troll you just to get under your skin. Um, I'm not going to do that. Everything awesome. I say. As dumb as it may come out, I'm being serious on. No comments on how you're used to that. So, I do like... He said I have to troll you, so... Well, you know, you can troll me if you want. Just put... Oh, it, just, in that case, but, all right. But put a disclaimer out there. But just tell me, like, at some point that you are trolling me. Because I'm, I'm letting everyone know this is how I actually feel. This is what I actually think. That way there's no confusion. So if you do troll me... Just for comedic effect, that's cool. Just at some point during the video's recording state, that was a troll right there. Okay. That was not the actual truth. So feel free to troll me. I will not troll you. My God, what have I gotten into? I like how Donald Trump speaks whatever is on his mind. As someone who speaks what is on my mind at all times, that's one of the biggest reasons I'm doing this YouTube channel to get my thoughts and views out there, particularly on Jesus, which I, which is the most important thing, which you agree with me on. Mm -hmm. I love how Donald Trump, it, no craps are given. Who, who he offends, you know, who wants to kill him, who thinks he's a terrible person, no craps are given. I love that bluntness and even abrasiveness of his personality. Um, so Donald Trump, first off, uh, does not speak his mind. Uh, he speaks what, what, whatever the most abrasive thing is. So for example, one thing that's pretty recent was he was saying something about being really pro-life, like, oh my goodness, how pro-life how pro -life he is. Going right to the point, okay. Exactly. Uh, except for he's not pro-life. Uh, he said he has said the exact opposite, that he is not pro-life. Matter of fact, he really sucks at talking about being pro-life because he doesn't understand the issues. Okay. Um, for example, uh, when it comes to uh, keeping, like, getting at condoms and, like, in other ways, uh, keeping people from getting pregnant, mm -hmm. does not understand the issues at all. Uh, okay. So, for for example, um, with Donald Trump, what was the comment that he said? Um, Get Google ready. I don't remember offhand, uh, but if uh, if if you were to to, to Google uh, Donald Trump pro choice, uh, okay. you, you there will be several different articles that will pop up because I've okay. I was, was like that is something that's <clears throat> interesting to me, being uh, conservative, although sometimes kind of moderate. Mm -hmm. uh, on the political spectrum, like pro pro life is very important to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, as a Christian, it's kind of hard for that not to be important. Yeah, um, and so he is terrible at being pro life. Like he's tried, he has genuinely tried, but he's just yeah. not very good at it. Um, okay. Also, Stephen Colbert is a great uh, great guy. Somebody who I saw one of his I saw one of his um, things on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, he was just he was ripping Donald. So Trump. if you look up uh, Stephen Colbert. Uh, Donald versus Trump. Uh, That's the video I saw, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, amazing video on just how he flip flops on everything. Okay. Um, he and he's done that on pro the pro life pro choice pro, issue exactly, along with um, whether Mexicans are good people or not. Uh, okay. Specifically, he called them uh, murderers and rapists, uh, and that, that's okay. why that they need to put up the wall um, because. I mean, Mexicans that come into this country are not good people. Um, that, that is a direct quote, by the way. Uh, Mexicans okay. are not good people. 
not not illegal immigrants, Mexicans in general. Mexicans in general are not good people. <laughs> so we're talking like brothers in Christ. Which some of them definitely are. Yeah. Uh, are not good people. Matter of fact, uh, Mexico has a very strong Catholic background. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not always on the same page with a lot of Catholics, but at the barest of minimums, like, we're brothers in Christ. Um, so, it's... He's not, kind of, just to state in my mind there, I'm not sure if I entirely agree with that statement. I just want to, just being blunt with the audience and with you. Um, but that, that is how you feel on the issue. Please keep going. Yeah. Um, and so, sure, he speaks his mind. Being able to speak your mind as a politician, although it won't make you popular, it's not going to make you hated either. Uh, or at least not. That doesn't make you hated in that you speak your mind. Uh, for him, <laughs> he doesn't... If, if honestly, if he stuck with one thing and was consistent with that one thing... No matter how horrible or intolerant it was. Yeah, then people wouldn't hate him as much as they do. It's just that he flip-flops all the time. You never know what he's into. So you're, so what, where I say I love his abrasiveness, you would say he's not being abrasive to be transparent or truthful. He's being abrasive to just purposefully piss off as many people as possible. I would ask you, possible. which Donald Trump are you talking about? Because it is the Donald Trump that is running for this election, or is it the Donald Trump that gave Hillary Clinton millions of dollars? Go into that a little bit. Uh, Donald Trump during... Uh, I mean, like what he... I mean, Hillary Clinton, I don't support her as a presidential candidate. Mm. But I'm not going to say that every single cause she's ever stood for is horrible and wrong. I'm not going to say that. So what... Do you remember so, the issue that was about? 2001. Um, okay. Healthcare was starting to become a really, really big thing in the United States. And so Hillary Clinton needs some really big backers behind... Uh, making healthcare something that every single person uh, paid for, like as a bill, like you'd get for you know, electricity. Then you have your health insurance. So full blown socialism. Uh, your call, not mine. <laughs> and that that is my call. I would uh, call that socialism. Uh, it's not necessarily what I feel should be the case. Okay. But all right. Anyway, uh, one of her biggest supporters in 2001. Check check, check this out. Uh, was Donald Trump. He said he, he loves Hillary Clinton, uh, and that she that she was a wonderful person, and so gave, he, gave her lots of money in so, two thousand one. So he was supporting the whole socialized medicine program, exactly. regardless of regardless of what I think about Obamacare and the entire socialist aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how you want to define it, he backed that initiative with millions of dollars to get that system started. Interesting, you say that. If not for <clears throat> Donald Trump. We may not have even gotten Obamacare because we wouldn't have had such a strong uh, health insurance like backing for all the different health insurance companies. And health insurance companies are massive corporations at this point. And we're talking like multi-billion dollar corporations. Oh yeah, HMOs, they are, they're loaded with money, no question there. And so they wouldn't have gotten off the ground without the, the political backing of Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton couldn't have done anything without the support of all our backers. Okay. With Donald Trump being a being, big one. Being a really big one because he's... He, owned at the time. Is there a particular source you can give there, or do we just have to leave um, me and the audience actually, to Google you, that one? You can Google that one um, to give you some search terms. If you look up uh, Donald Trump 2001, um, Hillary Clinton uh, healthcare, um, that, that, okay. that should bring that up for you. Okay. Um, I would do it here, but that would, that would delay things and take up time. Do, do your own homework. Do your own research. Do, do your and own I'm, research. And I'm talking to myself there as well. I've already done my research. Do yours. Oh. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> a little condescension there, much said. If you have it already, of course. Uh, in, which, in which case, good job. A plus. <laughs> but, yep. Ooh. Glad my scorecard hasn't been marked yet. Okay. So big backer there. And of course, as a political rival now, I'm assuming, has he attempted to slander Hillary and make her oh, out to yeah. be a bad person? Oh, yeah. That sounds like typical mudslinging, but it does, it would definitely serve as a contradiction and I don't remember the entire Stephen Colbert thing. I, I think there was a segment on there where mm. he did praise Hillary and then in the past and bash her here. Yeah. But so I just, my first thought would be typical political mudslinging. But um, I guess you would, mm. one, I don't like that from any candidate. But two, you would say that is really super hypocritical considering the port, support Tell he gave me. in the past. It's like he, he. Can you recall any specific quotes that he's given recently where like there was just something. 
not just normal mudslinging, but something maybe over the top, which I guess for Donald mm. Trump it wouldn't be hard to do. <laughs> yeah. But is, anything come to mind that um, you would point me in the audience to? Nothing offhand. Um, I, I'm vaguely remembering hearing something about uh, her being you know, the wife of Bill Clinton, of course, and the whole scandal with uh, Bill Clinton. <laughs> Um, but aside from that, uh, which honestly is, is a, it's a fair point, uh, but still, yeah. like him, this is 2001. This is after Bill Clinton's presidency. Yes. So at this yes. point, uh, you know, she was a senator in New York at that time, if I remember correctly. Um, sure. I, I actually don't remember that offhand. Okay. It's she's not the senator in my state, so. <laughs> but and uh, that can easily be googled. Yeah. Um, and so I mean, George uh, W. Bush at this point was, you know. Uh, getting ready to w. go. Yep, yeah, W. Bush. Uh, man, he was a. As much as I disagree with some things that he did, he's a he's a funny guy, good guy to have at a party. But anyway, yeah. Um, actually, he's he's a great example of somebody that I wish Trump was. Okay. Because uh, he he spoke his mind. He, he definitely he definitely spoke his mind, but at the same time, like he was just a lot better educated. I think. Uh, and he need, well, also, he was the governor of Texas first, whereas yeah. Trump had—and I know that's, that's not an area I'm really going to get into, the political experience. Obviously, Donald Trump has zero, um, which is— which it makes a terrible business experience. It has—what was it, like four—it was like four or seven companies that Donald Trump was bankrupted. And that's another— yeah, that so, should be very easily Google. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. That should be very easy to find. People are talking about this. Like he's trying to go up as, as, as a political candidate that has a lot of business sense, but he doesn't have any business sense since he has no business sense at no, all. Hold on, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you there. Despite going through a few companies and bankrupting them, and obviously you know affecting mm. people's lives and livelihoods and careers, mm. that's obviously a bad thing. However, to say he's a bad businessman, mm. it's hard for me to agree with that considering he is a billionaire, regardless of the loan of money he got from his dad. He obviously invested that money well because he is now a billionaire, not a millionaire. You can't mm. say a man that has literally become one of the wealthiest men in the world has no business sense. That doesn't fly. He is not one of the wealthiest men in the world. Um, a billionaire is not one of the wealthiest men in the world. Um, no, he's, he's not in the top ten. Um, but, Dude, I don't care if he's in the top 1,000. Once you've hit a billion dollars... Oh, I'm sure he's rich. But I mean, he's, he's not like one of the kids of... Was it Sam Walton, I think, the, head of, the guy who started Walmart? He's, he wasn't Sam... I think the guy's name was Sam Walton. He wasn't one of his kids who inherited billions mm. of dollars. He took, a, he took a loan of a few million, which is... Most of us would love to live on that and be happy, but he grew that number exponentially. I, he may not even be in the top 1,000. But if you've, if you've gotten that large an increase on what you started on, that's good business, plain and simple. I'm not aware that that was the only loan he ever got. It, there was probably more money there. Um, I, I can't speak of a source on that. I don't, think, it, he it, was, I don't think anyone gave but, him a billion dollars. He yeah. grew. Whatever loans he got, I have no... And Google this. Um, yeah. unless, unless you have a source to disprove me... I really find it hard to believe that someone loaned him so much money that he was close to a billion. I think he grew his money very, very, very well. Maybe the means were wrong. Maybe he mm. sacrificed a lot of other people. Immorality. To... <laughs> and, and at least four cases. So, the, you know, the means are questionable, but to say he's not good at business, I can't accept that argument unless you give me some proof. All right. I and find, again, I'm not, I, there's I no trolling here. Believe. I find it hard to believe that Donald Trump could have even done that. Just with the display that he's done thus far in this presidential election, I, it, it's really hard for me to believe that it was that it, it is because of him that he got that money. It, can you give any sources or any proof of that? Can you give any sources that says counter? I just get, look at his, look at his um, current personal assets. Look at what he is mm -hmm. personally worth. That money came from somewhere. You get that much money, I would that's guess, good business and good investments. I would guess it would be his father. That would, that would be my guess. Okay, so that's... Oh, uh, you were, you're a little weak sauce there, so that's something for you to look into later. Mm -hmm. um, nonetheless, um, let's go to the bankrupting of those businesses. Um, was there anything... Now let, let's be honest. Um, mm -hmm. I'm doing YouTube right now. I'm investing money in it. 
Um, and I know that the chances of the return on my investment are slim. So the primary motivation <clears throat> for me doing this, I'd love to make it a livelihood and a job, but primarily I'm doing this because I enjoy it. It's fun. Yeah. I want to continue, even if I don't end up making it my livelihood or my chief source of income, I still want to keep doing this. There's a risk for failure. Um, so with all the business endeavors he's been a part of, he hasn't just been a part of those four or six. Well, and that goes back to the original point. I think probably several business endeavors did succeed. Let's, but let's, since we don't really have an answer there, let's talk about the ones that he did fail. The ones that were failed, sometimes you do your best and your business just goes under. And the people that work for you, because your business went under, they're unemployed. You did your best. They did your best. Nothing you can do about it. Was there anything particularly unethical or you know, just kind of like weird or sketchy surrounding those bankruptcies. One of the businesses that he bought was a hotel. Um, I don't remember offhand what exactly went on at that, the hotel that he had purchased. Okay. Um, but I, I do remember that there was an issue with the management that he put in. <clears throat> Uh, I forget offhand exactly what the issue was specifically, mm -hmm. uh, but I know that they were you know, underqualified and unable to do the job. A uh, business that was doing you know, great before, the second that Donald Trump bought it, just went under. Um, and that he's, he's known, and this is also something that is very easily Googleable. Uh, one way that he goes about making money is by buying businesses and then um, basically like renovating them, if you will, and then liquidating the assets. In other words, kind of like what you would say is, you know, buy the business, do everything you can to make your buck, um, and forget the people who work there. Yeah. We're gonna, I'm going to do what I need to do to make my money, and I'm going to use the people under me. They're, they're not going to get necessarily a career or even a good job. I'm going to make my money, and I'm mm -hmm. going to just bank, you know, it's going to go into bankruptcy. I'll have made my money, and we're mm -hmm. done. And although that's legal, it's not necessarily ethical. Now okay. things aren't. Is that is, can we Google for facts on that? Yes. Uh, one thing that you can also Google on facts, and this is uh, things that aren't necessarily legal, uh, are some of his investments in China, uh, which okay. he, which he's by the way said you know, uh, he's a very American man and, and being very patriotic until you start talking to him <laughs> about overseas investments, especially in China. He okay. he invests pretty heavily in China actually, um, and he became uh, president. America and China become even better buddies. Um, see, that's the thing. Like, he he talks down to China as if like you know China is like a is a bad country, um, and as far as like trying to get around taxes, tariffs, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And but at the same time, he's doing the same thing with his businesses over in China, shipping to the United States. Um, and he's been, or not he was he wasn't arrested for, but he was called out on that. Okay. Um, and so it's just like just so much flip flopping on you know that issue. Um, he flip flopped on the um, right to life okay. uh, for you know for in the case of like abortions and such. He's just not a reliable president. All right. Uh, it's I mean I'm not sure how uh, obviously your opinions of Obama are not very high. Correct. Uh, but but even him. Even he's like, yeah, this, he was surprised that Obama or that Donald Trump even become president or even started to become president in the Senate's election. Or start, started seeking the presidency. Right. Gotcha. And our time is pr pretty much up. Um, I know I didn't start recording immediately. And there was one very important thing I want to throw in at the end of this. And mm -hmm. you'll definitely appreciate this. Guys, there's something way more important than this election. And that's King Jesus. He reigns regardless of who becomes president down here, and his kingdom is going to be one without end. One thing I'm committed to on all of my Sunday messages, I want to give an invitation to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Because at the end of the day, all of the leaders of this world, all the kingdoms of this world are going to pass away. I want to have a part two of this conversation. I want to do this again yep. at some point soon. But much more important than this upcoming election, much more important is where are you going to be when you die? You know, and that's a, you know, that's a point in case, even if Jesus were to come today and everyone wasn't technically going to die, we're not going to be in this world and in this reality forever. We're all going to stand before God at some point. We're going to be personally accountable for everything we've done, including all of the sins or wrongdoings that we've done. Um, and his kingdom 
being eternal, that's something you got to get in on on the ground up. You don't get to just you you don't just waffle on that and then later on like you know I think I'll go into that kingdom. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Your decisions now. The decision happens now. Will you turn to him? Will will you become a part of his kingdom? And to become a part of his kingdom, you've got to admit that you have done things wrong. You've done things that are against him. You've done things that would not be worthy of being in the kingdom of his that will reign forever. And the good news, the gospel, is that Jesus Christ loved you so much that he died on the cross for your sins. He paid the price for everything you've done wrong. He is giving, He not only created you, he redeemed you when he died on that cross, to, and then he rose again to guarantee you eternal life with the forgiveness of your sins. So he created you, and then he bought you back so that one day you can be with him forever if you will acknowledge that you need him. And some of you right now are just like, okay, the Trump part's done, I'm checking out, and that that's your call, that's up to you. Some of you are probably looking at this and thinking, hey, I need, I need that. I, I want something that's way beyond the kingdoms of this world. I want something way beyond what Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or anyone else has to offer. And if that's you, then I'd like to invite you right now to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just tell him that, you're, that you are a sinner, you admit that you've done wrong and that you need his help to get into heaven. You need him to be a part of your life, that you believe that he did die on the cross to forgive you of your sins and that he did rise from the dead three days later, guaranteeing eternal life in his kingdom. And if you, if you would like a prayer to follow, then um, I will, let me just go ahead and lead you in one right now. And you can just, just say the words that I'm saying and say them straight from your heart. If you would pray this prayer with me. Eyes open, eyes closed. It doesn't really matter. God hears you. Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Seth. I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. I know that I've done wrong. I know that I've done wrong. I admit that I need you. I admit that I need you. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe you died on the cross for me. Shedding your blood to forgive my sins shedding your blood to forgive my sins. And that you rose three days later. And that you rose three days later. Conquering death and sin. Conquering death and sin. Please come into my heart right now, Lord Jesus. Please come into my heart right now, Lord Jesus. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for my sin. Be my Lord and Savior. Be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So now, Seth is a Christian. And he's going to heaven. That's good news. Thank God. <laughs> Scared the first time. So he's good. And if you did pray that prayer, that is awesome. Welcome to the family of God. Um, so much more important than joining my channel and being one of the freaks. Now you are a Jesus freak. Now you are my brother or my sister. Um, if I can just encourage you. Get, you know, if you don't have a Bible, get one. If you, you're probably not going to church, um, find a good church home nearby. One that says Jesus Christ is God. He did die on the cross. He did rise from the dead. Some churches, believe it or not, don't believe that. So be a little bit picky when you're finding a church home. And just talk to God. It doesn't have to be anything mm -hmm. fancy or elaborate. It can be just, God, today sucks. I really need some help. That's a prayer. That's, and God's totally cool with that. Start talking to him every day because now he is your Lord and your Savior. He's the one you can go to for anything and everything. And he is the one who will one day draw you into his kingdom. And you will live with him there forever in peace, in safety. No more pain, no more death, no more sorrow. It's a lot better than that. But, yeah. I was saying it, and it, just, and it just gets better and better and better. I definitely don't have the time to go into all the benefits that the kingdom yields, but just know that your life is forever changed, both now and in the hereafter, because you're now a Christian. You're now a follower of Jesus Christ. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you disliked it, hit that dislike button. If you really liked it, share this video, subscribe, and join the freaks! And even if you don't subscribe, please share this video with those you think would be interested in discussion on the election, and definitely with those who need to hear the end where I um, introduced the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love you guys very much, and God bless.
Except for 